Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano and on today's program we'll get all the details about this year's free basic boating safety classes being offered by the Quincy Police Department. First though we'll check out the weather and the news for you this morning. Currently in Quincy getting cloudy out there. It's 46 degrees right now. The clouds will win out today and look out for some showers turning over to some flurries uh, tonight. No real accumulation here. Maybe a little more down on the Cape and Islands. Highs today in the upper 40s lows tonight into the upper 20s not a bad weekend coming up i think sunday is the pick tomorrow will be kind of brisk and breezy with sun and clouds highs in the low 40s much warmer on sunday with sun and clouds highs in the mid 50s and warmer still on monday the feel of spring partly cloudy monday with a high maybe 63 64 degrees and looks like warm for most of next week but again cloudy and a 46 in quincy right now in the news today, almost 44% of Quincy's over 60,000 registered voters cast ballots in the Super Tuesday presidential primary this week. Joe Biden carried the city with over 5,800 votes. That was 612 more than Bernie Sanders, who placed second. Elizabeth Warren finished a distant third. Now, Quincy City Clerk Nicole Crispo says the polls were busy, but that there were no major glitches. She says all of the early voting ballots were tabulated at City Hall instead of at the polling locations. So we found in 2016 that we had so many that voted early, it bogged down the polling place. So we're trying to keep it, uh, the flow going and keep everybody um, happy and we want it to be a convenience for everybody. So we're trying to take the bulk of the early voting and do it at City Hall. The state primary is on September 1st and the final election, November 3rd. The deadline to register to vote in the September primary, August 12th. And for the November election, the registration deadline is October 14th. Plans for a new Quincy Police Station are moving forward as the city is working to acquire the property needed for that new complex. Mayor Thomas Koch says some of the needed land will have to be taken by eminent domain. We went to the council to uh, add the eminent domain piece mm -hmm. to three of the parcels because we're not getting much traction with the we're dealing with the lawyers on getting it, it done as a friendly taking. So mm -hmm. we're going to invoke the the tool of eminent domain. Uh, that's in committee now on three of the parcels. The fourth parcel, uh, we are working with the attorneys, both sides working well together, and hopefully we'll come to a conclusion on that. The architect is now in the in the real uh, you know throes of, of getting into the detail of, of uh, a bid package for the building. I mean, we, as you know, through the council, there's been a couple of public meetings on what the building would look like, what the layout of the building would be, but now you get into the real nitty-gritty of the details. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, obviously, the architect working on that, uh, and then once that's put together, probably six six uh, months from now, maybe eight months from now, then we'll go out to bid. Uh, and then, uh, hopefully, we'll have all the uh, real estate issues dealt with and uh, we can get a shovel in the ground hopefully late next year. Koch says the city is negotiating with the owners of the Stop and Shop gas station and several other properties. However, he says some property owners have not responded to the city, forcing the eminent domain option. Father Bill's homeless shelter will be moved to a building across the street. The Quincy Animal Shelter will be relocated to eventually a new facility that's under construction on Quarry Street. Well, sports legends, elected officials, business leaders, media, celebrities all participated in the 7th Annual Saving by Shaving fundraiser at Granite Telecommunications in Quincy yesterday. Participants included Big Poppy, David Ortiz, also Drew Brees of the New Orleans Saints, former Patriot Joe Andruzzi, Johnny Busick of the Big Bad Bruins days, also Governor Baker, Jim Browdy, Dave Andelman, many, many more, and barbers from several local barbershops also donated their services for the event this year. Rob Hale from Granite Telecommunications donated $5,000 to Boston Children's Hospital for every haircut. The event raised $7 million yesterday. To date, this event has raised more than $34 million for charitable organizations. 
Interfaith Social Services of Quincy has announced that it has reached its goal in their 2018 capital campaign. This past week, Interfaith said it had raised over $165,000 to help them expand their capacity in their food pantry, also increase services in their New Directions Counseling Center. Those funds will be used to purchase a walk-in freezer, a new food pantry truck, reconfigure the counseling center to provide more privacy for clients, and improve the facility with new lighting and improved accessibility. Interfaith says it has seen dramatic increases in people utilizing their food pantry and their counseling services. And now that you are up to date with weather and news, let's check out our programming lineup for you for later on today here on Quincy Access Television. It'll start with a replay of this program currently in Quincy today at 5 o'clock. We go on the road with Jazzy Bill, episode 11 tonight at 5.30. Six o'clock, sound advice with attorney Tom Williams. Topic tonight, home Hello, refinancing. Folks, I am attorney Tom Williams and welcome to sound advice. Currently in Quincy, the interviews at 6.30, we feature the Quincy Choral Society. Right after that, at 6.45 on the interviews program, the QCAP Tax Assistance Program. 7 o'clock, The Call. Tonight, Happy Marriage, The Sacred Creation, and Divine Alliance. Hi, everybody. This is 8 o'clock, the 2020 Family Winterfest in Quincy Center this year, featuring the Blue Hills Trailside Museum Birds of Prey presentation. 8.15, currently in Quincy, the interviews. We feature Save the Harbor, Save the Bay. So let's talk a little bit about... Thomas Crane Public Library Vincent presents Van the genius of Van Gogh the, at 8.30. Uh, sort of English American pronunciation. 10 o'clock, Quincy High versus Newton North Girls Basketball from February 26th. And at 11 o'clock on Channel 8 tonight, Democracy Now! Check out Channel 9 every day. You'll see Quincy City Departments, different committee activities featured. It all starts at 5.30 with Quincy in focus. A.M. Quincy at 6 o'clock with Ward 6 Councilor Bill Harris this evening. FYI from the Quincy Health Department at 6.30. Tonight's topic, tattooing. How's it being order? 7 o'clock, Massachusetts formal Chair, House session House from February 26th. Has been released by the Committee on Bills on Third Reading. We go on the agenda at 8.30 on Channel 9 with a Municipal Buildings update. And then find out what's happening at your library for March at 9.30. To get a complete program schedule, just go over to our website, qatv.org, and please click on Program Schedule. And as always, we uh, appreciate it if you'd like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and don't forget, check out our weekly ad in the Quincy Sun. Coming up, we'll take a look at a few of the current events and activities that are featured on our electronic bulletin board for you to know about. Please stay tuned. We're back with you in just one minute. Welcome back. Here is a check of some of the current events and activities we're showing on our electronic bulletin board we'd like you to know about. Like the Atlantic Youth Orchestra. They're performing tonight at 7 o'clock at St. Chrysostom's Church in Wollaston. This is a free concert, but they appreciate any donations. St. Patrick's Day corned beef dinner being held at the Morissette American Legion Post on Liberty Street in Quincy. This will be on March 14th from 3 to 7 p.m. Also featuring Irish step dancers, drawings, music, and prizes. Everyone is welcome to attend. Seaside Gardeners of Squantum accepting applications for their annual Edith H. McDonald Scholarship. Any high school senior living in Squantum or any relative of a member of the Garden Club that's going to a two- or a four-year school can apply for the $1,000 scholarship. Contact Laurie Kelleher. She's at 
797-3349, or you can send her an email, Laurie Kelleher at Verizon.net. Applications must be postmarked by March 20th. Quincy Point Congregational Church presents a St. Patrick's Day dinner with the Island Grove Course. This is on March 14th at 6 p.m. And the proceeds this year will benefit the Australia Brush Fire Relief Fund. And if you have an event or an activity that you'd like to promote, visit our website, qatv.org. Just download a bulletin board request form, fill it out, send it in. We'll get your message up here on Channel 8, too. Coming up, we learn about this year's free basic boating safety classes being offered by the Quincy Police Department. That's next. When? Yeah, remember when Joe had hair? Welcome back. It is March. That must mean it's time for the basic boating safety classes offered by the Quincy Police Department. Son of a gun if it isn't. So Bob Bell and Mike Foley are here once again from the Marine Unit of the Police Department to give us all the details. Hey guys. Morning Joe. Welcome, good welcome. To be here, Joe. Thanks yeah, for having us you. again. It's great to think about spring. We used to do this in February, Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think it snowed too much, so <laughs> we decided <laughs> this to This year this year you would know know the difference. Move right? it up it into March. Like April. Yeah, exactly. Uh, actually has the boating season started, or do you think it will start earlier this I'd year? I'd say it'll definitely be early this year. Whenever so? the weather is nice, yeah, people get the itch early to get out there and get in their boats. I would think, yeah. yeah definitely. Uh, you know what? There are new people coming to the city all the time. So for folks who might not know, the police department in Quincy has its own marine unit. Correct. You guys are Correct. part of that. What, yes. what is the actual unit? So, uh, you know, the city has 27 miles of coastline, um, has, you know, marinas, yacht clubs, maybe 2,500 you know, recreational yeah. boats, ferries. 13 um, city beaches, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, basically from, you know, everything from the high tide line out is kind of ends up, be, you know, being us, right. so to speak, you know. And we basically do everything that the city needs done out there on the water. Um, you know, from moving docks, putting out buoys, that kind of thing, we, we kind of do it all. Yeah, you have uh, how many vessels now for the unit? Uh, I believe we have five. Five, okay. And how many members? Uh, and there's still still just the four of us. Okay. Uh, and, we, you know, we have guys that, that help out and fill in and right. do that kind of thing. Yep. So. Also, uh, education is part of um, the uh, duties of the it Marine is a, Unit it, it's also. A, it's a big force multiplier for yeah. us, correct. Correct. No question. We, um, you know, the, the more people that are educated on, you know, how to be safe out there, the easier it is for us to do our job. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, I know that you take uh, students out frequently uh, on the boats, too. We do, yep, yep. Show them from their uh, city from a different perspective. That's right, that's right. Try to get them out there on the water and see that there's a whole whole other world out there. Sure. Um, part of the, the goal of education are these boating uh, classes that you offer every year, it seems like. Bob, do you know about how long this has been going on now? Uh, I think Mike and I have been on the unit for, what, 13 or 14 years? Wow. And, uh, 2007. Okay. Uh, well. We've been doing it uh, since then, personally, but they were going on bef well before we became oh, they part were. of the unit as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, they're offered here in Quincy, but they're they're taught or they're funded, I guess, by the state. Is that right? Yeah. So it's a collaboration with okay. the state, the uh, Massachusetts Environmental Police. Um, they put together um, all the admin stuff. They uh, get grants that pay for the books that have all the information in it that we use. Um, and that's coordinated through them. So you sign up through the Massachusetts Environmental Police on right. their website for the course in Quincy, if that's one you want to take. Mm -hmm. they're, they're offered in, in uh, places all over the state. Oh, OK. Um, and But you guys teach them, right? You guys we teach them, right. So, yeah. so Mike and I and, and Jamie and Bob, uh, yep. the other two guys on the unit, were certified by the environmental police to be able to teach this class. Great. Um, typically, about how many folks would you say participate? Um, we have room for 50. Okay. Um, we usually get somewhere between 40 and 50 people per class. We run uh, three, cl at least three classes per year. If if demand uh, exceeds supply, sometimes we'll add on a fourth. Great. But um. we have we have two classes that are uh, run on Tuesday evenings, mm -hmm. and then we have one on Saturdays, which seems to be a little bit better for uh, some of the younger uh, kids that want to take the class. Right, and uh, they kick off on uh, March 10th and run right through May, actually. So there's opportunity. Right. Yeah. yeah we start next Tuesday evening. Uh, that'll run for three consecutive uh, Tuesdays. Um, then we've got one that's on Saturdays for three consecutive Saturdays. And then the last one, um, I think there might be uh, two Tuesdays and one Thursday. Uh, let's Tuesday. see here. The May courses are May 7th, 12th, and 19th. So those are a Thursday and two Tuesdays. 
know. Just, that's just scheduling because um, the maritime center that we used to use to teach yes. these classes in is uh, coming down <laughs> yes. uh, to make room for a new boat ramp, and right. a potentially a new maritime center. So the classes now are, are being offered at the Manit Community Center, uh, which is a, a different location, but just a tenth of a mile down the road from where we used to do it. Right, yeah, people I'm sure that uh, have gone to the other ones know exactly where that is. It's where Manit Community Health Center is, is that right? Right, yeah, yeah I think it's Howes Knack Community Center and Manit Community Health, or they share the building. The there. same building, yeah, okay. And they're free. Yes, they're yeah. free. Uh, so, um, like I said, the environmental police pay for a, lo a lot of it. Um, we teach it mostly on shift, uh, so it's oh, okay. part, of, part of our uh, regular duties. And so kind of, if you could explain what a kind of typical class entails, you know, how, do, how does it run? So the class is tailored for people who have no idea about being on a boat in the water. Okay. It's a, a very basic beginner class. Um, so we get people who have no experience, we get people who have some experience, and then we get people who have a lot of experience because being certified on this class is a requirement in some states. In oh. Massachusetts, it's not a requirement yet, but if you go up to New Hampshire, say you just want to rent a boat, you have to have a certification. And, um, our class is certified uh, nationally through the environmental police, so a certificate from Massachusetts is good to uh, operate a boat in New Hampshire. Okay. So we get a lot of people who do that, and people who just want a refresher. Um, we've had people who have their U.S. Coast Guard captain's license, um, but New Hampshire won't take that. They want you to have is that right? <laughs> the basic uh, boating safety class. So, okay. So they come and do that. So. The thing that's always most astounding to me is um, anybody 12 years old and older can take these. It is pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the fact that they can take the class is, is not that amazing, but the fact that when they get their certificate, <laughs> uh, they can drive a boat by themselves up to 65 feet in length is pretty amazing. Yes. Um, so that we, Mike and I, we talk about state law and mom law. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, so uh, by state I'll law. Coin that phrase, mom law. <laughs> mom law. Yeah. But always, pr always supersede state law. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so. Do you get a lot of uh, twelve-year-olds that that are piloting boats no. in Quincy Bay? And, and um, we we do. Mo mo they're not running sixty-five foot boats, right. but you know they might have a sixteen-foot skiff okay. um, that got handed down to them or something, and All right. they go out fishing, uh, that type of thing. And, sure. Um, it, you know, and it's good to have, uh, the certificate's also good to have, if, if you get stopped by the Coast Guard, they, yeah. d they do sort of random uh, checks just to make sure you have your safety equipment. You could say, hey, I got this card. It just lets them know that you care enough to, about your safety and others yeah. to have taken the class. And it also is helpful with uh, many insurance companies when you get, get boat insurance. Um, if you've taken the class, they'll give you a pretty good discount, ah. like 10 or 15% discount like on your insurance. Kind of like driver's ed, I don't know if they do anymore, but they used to for, exactly, for cars. Yeah, yeah. When, okay. when I took it, yeah, sure. Yeah, when I did too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike, we should also talk about the importance of, even if you're not planning on buying or piloting a boat, it's good to get trained in the event something happens on a vessel you happen to be a passenger on, right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, it amazes me how many... Um, uh, how many uh, how many women are the ones that actually own the boats? Mm -hmm. But it's usually the guy, you know, the husband, what have you, that's driving it. Yeah. So, but you know, every, if everybody on the boat comes in and takes a class, it's definitely a lot safer for everybody. Yeah. yeah. If if the only trained person has some kind of a health emergency and is unable to to act, um, somebody else that's trained could step in. Absolutely. You know, or at Absolutely. least know how to call for help. I guess. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We we go through all that in the class. It's 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 a, it's a twelve hour course. It's wow. very encompassing okay. on. Um, on you know all, all how to you know from the basics of you know how to get on into a boat mm. to you know what to do in an emergency yeah, it's uh, it's it's very educational and everybody that comes to the course yep. nobody's ever come up to us at the end and said you know what, I didn't learn anything in this class you know <laughs> what I mean even yeah. even the guy that used to drive tankers through the Panama Canal okay. came up to us afterwards and said yeah you know what I've been been on the water my whole life, but I still learned, you know, a couple of things in this class. It's really, really good. Well, it's like, uh, you know, stuff that you learned in grade school and you never use again, but then uh, you, you go to a class and you say, oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. I forgot yeah. about it that. It might remind you of something that you forgot you learned. Yeah. Or, yes, or, you know, things are constantly changing and moving forward, and, you know, you, 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 you may learn something that, you know, that, that, that's new that they didn't right. have back when you learned how to drive a boat. Yeah. Are there any kind of um, significant changes out on the water around Quincy that folks should be aware of? Uh, no. Okay. No. Nothing. Um, 
No, not, not, not nothing. Nothing this year. Okay. From last year, that's different. Okay. You know, okay. That so I can think of no navigational challenges or, no, or no. right of way changes. Nothing. Okay. Nothing like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, are there more boats registered? Would you say? Definitely. Really. The economy goes takes off like yeah. it has. Uh, people have more disposable money. Yep. Um, and yeah, a lot more. Lot more you, there'll be a lot more people out boating this year than last year and in the years past. Yeah. Just because uh, times are good. Yeah. But yeah. do you know? But how many? I'm sorry, but yeah, go ahead. Well, I swung by the boat show yep. uh, back in February. Oh, okay. And it was packed. Was it really? Um, okay. More boats and more people than I had seen in years. Okay. Um, so that kind of bodes well for people getting out on the water. Yeah. But um, in Quincy, we have about uh, just over 2,000 boats. So wow. There's, there's quite a few. And <coughs> you could see last year the marinas, this, there were very few empty slips. Is that right? Um, okay. So for a few years there when the economy was a little rough, um, you'd see a lot of empty slips. But now they're, they're filling up. Interesting. And most of them are, are full or, you know, early in the season. Yes. Uh, but you can still um, get a mooring. There's still uh, spaces around the... Um, waterfront where you can get them more. Okay. Uh, you've brought some uh, demonstrations of some uh, typical safety equipment, I guess, that folks should have on board. And, yeah. And the number one, obviously, is going to be your life preserver, right? Yes. We, we talk about um, lots of things in the class, but yeah. what is safety equipment? What what equipment is required? Oh, we required. Talk, okay. We talk about different, um, different type of, of life jackets. Yeah. This is the one that, you know, we grew up with, right? Yep. So you went out fishing and yep. you had to wear this and if it was like 100 degrees out there you weren't very comfortable. You're, you're dying yeah exactly yeah it, yeah. it was pretty rough so yeah. that has been basically replaced with something like this okay which you know after a little while you'll forget that you're even wearing yeah it. Um, this has a co2 uh, cartridge that will inflate they make different ones some of them uh, automatically inflate when you go into the water yep. others are, are manual inflate okay but this replaces this okay. and they're so comfortable now sometimes i'll drive home and i'll get <laughs> in the house and my wife will be like yeah you're still wearing your life jacket so that that's how comfortable okay. they are. all right so that's um, people are more inclined to wear it because it's more comfortable right yes yeah yes so that it, it's um this one will probably do a better job overall if yeah. keeping you alive, but if you're not wearing it, it's not going to do you any good. Yeah. And this one, if you're wearing it, is going to be better than you know, not yeah, wearing that. Yeah, well, one. the idea, I guess, is just at least keep your head above water, right? Yes, so yes. Until right. somebody can come rescue you, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a, a child one here, a yep. vest, vest type, which is nice. Um, if you get one like this, you want to make sure that you uh, put the crotch strap and clip that on okay. so that if a youngster goes in the water, yep. they won't slip out of it. Okay. Um, and then this is uh, type four uh, throwable at, at boat 16 oh, feet right. longer. You have to have one of these on board. Okay. Um, these this type here, you have to have one for everybody that's on board. Everybody. Yeah, okay. Everybody has to have one. Okay. Um, Regardless of age. Or yes. Okay. If they're if they're 12 years old or younger, yep. and the and the boat's underway and they're above deck, then yes. they have to they have to be wearing it. Okay. Above 12, you don't, you're don't. not required legally to wear it, but we recommend that everybody wear one all the time. Absolutely. When, when we're underway, we wear it all the time. Okay. Um, Mike likes to tell a story, like if you're driving down the road and you don't have your seatbelt on and you see somebody coming at you, you don't have time <laughs> to put it on. It's right. the same on a boat. Yeah. When things go bad, they yeah. go bad fast. Really quickly, yeah, okay. Over. This is something relatively new. Yep. Uh, this is recommended for paddle boarders, the stand-up paddle boarders, oh. which has become you know, really popular yes. in the last few years. Yeah. So this is a, a manual inflate. You just wear this around your waist so yep. it doesn't hinder you when you're, you know, paddling. Okay. Um, and then if you find yourself in the water and, and you can't get back on the on the paddle board yeah. and you have trouble, then um, you can pop this and uh, it comes up like a horse collar. You just put it around your oh, head all right. and it okay. will uh, keep you afloat uh, until help comes. Okay, that's great. Yeah, um, we're seeing a lot of Black Creek, especially a lot of Black Creek is a lot of people. Um, sometimes people are, are pretty adventurous. You see them out in the middle of uh, Quincy Bay. Good luck uh, to them. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that's a yeah. challenge because that's, that's quite a workout. That's a physical workout. It is, yeah. yeah. It's a very, very good workout. Sure. Um, so we t these are the things we talk about. We talk about radios, how to call the Coast Guard for help yes. if you need to. And you mentioned, you know, everybody on board should, should know how to do it. We yeah. got a lot, of, a lot of couples come. They want to learn together, um, which is really good. But we had an example a couple of years ago. The only person that knew how to drive the boat 
fell out of the boat. Right, I remember. And the other people yeah. just drifting um, until we showed up to help them out. Could have been very bad. Thankfully, it was close to shore, but yeah, could have yes. been bad really yes. quickly, yeah. yeah. Um, mass.gov slash OLE is the website um, to register and get more information, right? Yes, okay. that shows all the courses and you can you can uh, just click on the Quincy course that you want to take okay. and get signed up. Okay, and best to do it soon because I know they fill up really quick. Yeah, there's still uh, openings available for all three classes, okay. um, but I would expect that um, they'll start to uh, fill up soon, especially okay. that, that Saturday one, I think, is going to be pretty popular. Yeah, no question. And right. the closer we get to boating season, the more people think, oh, yeah, oh, yeah let's go for yeah, boats. Let's take a boating, yeah. boating safety class. So, all right. Guys, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for the time. Thanks, to coming to welcome. Talk. Really Hope appreciate it helps it. get the word out for you and uh, have a safe boating season. Thank you very much, You're Jeff. You're welcome. Just enough time to uh, check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Kind of what you see is what you get. Cloudy out there and temperatures in the mid to uh, upper 40s. Tonight could get a little messy. Start out of some rain, flip over to some snow just on the grassy surfaces here. More down on the Cape and Islands and the weekend. So kind of brisk tomorrow, nicer on Sunday and even nicer on Monday. Thanks again to Bob Bell, Mike Foley for joining us here from the Quincy Police Marine Units. Thank you to our crew. Thank you for watching Monday at 1130. Quincy School Committee Vice Chairman Anthony Andronico right here on Currently in Quincy. We'll see you then.